Thank you for clicking play. This is PK of the PK Comic Book 411. Uh, we have a slew of Marvel releases in the last two weeks. Three weeks ago there wasn't too much and then there's just been a flood. And they're not being too nice to us, are they? Because there's the all new and there's the uncanny and then you have three or four different titles and the five different Spider-Man titles. Just a flood. So I'm going to try to uh, get those a little bit uh, more succinct for you because there is uncanny, then Inhumans, and then Avengers, and then X-Men, and then all new Inhumans, and Avengers, and X-Men. Why do they do it to us? Money grab? Possibly. So, what are we going to do? We're going to try to find the flagship of Marvel. What is the Hickman's run of 2015-16? And it's not so easy to figure out. So, I'm going to sort of pop back and forth between publishers and authors. And uh, then we're going to go into the single titles of Marvel. Go into Star Wars, which is sort of Marvel, sort of not, sort of Disney. And then go into the uh, independent publishers and also Image. And then end up with a D. DC Comics, um, which is sort of in flux right now as they're doing the Justice League Dark Side War, but then you have all of these other titles that are sort of after that and after Joker's Endgame. Um, how are they going to, to make that succinct? I'm not too sure. Um, but in terms of the events that's currently from the past Hickman's run, we're still at Secret Wars. It is now eight of nine, no longer eight. Now I'll tell you, things that happen in this particular issue are drop jawed. I mean, it's expedient, but it's huge. We're talking Galactus, we're talking the thing is the shield, we're talking Black Panther coming through a door wearing something that you're okay. So this is eight of nine, and whether it's delayed releases uh, or the new titles are already at four, um, when I read this, you know, what the... I need to go back and read maybe six, seven, maybe three, four, five, maybe maybe wait and do a binge read once nine comes out and get the whole thing and see how they wrap up this whole universe universe with, uh, with Van Doom. Um, so what I thought, which may be the flagship, is Joshua Williamson's Illuminati. Now, I love Joshua Williamson's work in uh, Birthright, Ghosted. He also does Nailbiter. And I really thought that this was going to be uh, it because of the Illuminati being the new Avengers of Hickman's, which was sort of the backbone of everything going on uh, in, in the Marvel Universe then. Uh, this artwork, to me, reminds me of a Disney movie. I am not excited about it. Other people are. Other people are really liking this. By the way, uh, Facebook groups, I am a part of your comic book community where we post our vlogs. CBNH which is comic book nerds are hot, don't be fooled by the title, really strict rules, 30,000 members, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group there. Um, and so Illuminati. I love the writer, hate the art. I'm probably dropping this. Um, is it really the shackles of the big two keeping the writers from writing what they, they really want or creator-owned? Is that why their pearls go to that? Who can say? But... Uh, Disappointed and probably dropping that. So that's not the flagship, and let's go into what probably is the ultimates. Want to lead off big and strong and bold, just like his back letter on this. This is Al Ewing, who also writes the New Avengers. We'll get to that in a second. The Ultimates HQ is the Triskelion, which is now vacant because Shield is gone because of the tie into the Captain America Winter Soldier movie. Okay, and uh, I, I just, I want to open with this. It's on my phone. This is the back letter, last three paragraphs by Al. So by now, you've seen what we're aiming for. Something different, something with an energy all its own. Something that aims to be as big and special and ready for tomorrow as the first ever Ultimates comic. Harkening back to the Ultimates comic. Uh, but moving in a completely different direction. Now this is where it gets good. The word of the day is cosmic. We're going into the unknown with a selection of the most powerful heroes of the Marvel Universe to lead the way, and we're going to zap your mind with a billion volts of hyper energy from beyond the dawn of time, period, because we can. Again, we're going to zap, we're gonna zap your mind with a billion volts of hyper energy from beyond the dawn of time because we can. We've got a reputation to maintain. We're going big. We're going bold. You're going to remember the ultimates. Ow. Okay. Put this on your pull list.
fantastic, almost a riddle to be unsolved. I think I went through three times. And in fact, in this number two, where things get pretty meaty, uh, it's the origin, a little bit tweaks of an old origin, but the origin of Galactus himself and a complete redefine of what he is and what he is to the universe. Can't say enough about that. Moving on to another, what I would consider flagship, is Tom King. We love Tom King. A, a CIA operative, and he is very, uh, very succinct in, in promoting that he didn't do several tours. He's like, I did six months, this one, but he is the role doll of today. And that's Willy Wonka and James and Giant Peach, etc. Um, we love Tom King, and it's the visions. It's fabulous. Here's number one. Easily the winner. Uh, I mean, it's it's the first Marvel Marvel issue that Tom King wrote, and it is fabulous. Um, then you go to Tom King number two, and it's not even just the dialogue. He's he's sort of scripting the panels in a way that you're gonna love. Um, in, in the first three panels, look at all of what they're doing. I mean, did you notice that the principal takes away the basketball? in the hallway of the high school. I wish you could verify that uh, there's 37 different times that the vision saved the world. I don't have that backstory, but uh, Tom King, man, read the letter in the back. It's, it's, it's touching and rallying. Another one that he is uh, writing is the Robin Moore. And you'd almost think when I was reading this that there's several different artists, so the art sort of go back and forth. but. Uh, He's been writing Grayson along with Tom Seeley for a while, and that's where he got his start, and that's a Robin. So he then starts the Robin War with all three Robins and all of the kids be becoming the vigilantes. And there is a one page on here that is so fabulous between Damien and the, and the James Gordon uh, Batman. Um, I can't say enough about Tom King. Here's another one. This is so good it can be a standalone, again by Tom King, and it's the Green Lantern Dark Side War one shot. Literally, can't, it sort of redefines what Hal went through with the backstory and what he's doing today, and it can be actually taken out of the Dark Side story as just, just get the comic and read it. It's that good, people. And to stick with the Dark Side War, we have Lex Luthor. This just came out. Interesting development of how Lex and his backstory and who he is, and how he got his powers now as the, you know, god of of the uh, planet Apocalypse where Darkseid was. And my question is, is did Darkseid have to go through that same thing? Very, very interesting. Um, Brian Hitch's Q&A and the end of that is very interesting. Please read that. I will get to Brian Hitch's JLA at the end when I get to, back to DC. So now we get to all of these, all new, all different. Each one, I mean, there's, it's, they, they just don't help us. The all new X-Men here, is, is one of the best titles of the 2014-15 run. But right here, I mean, the problem is is that the, the magic of the all-new X-Men was them coming from the past and dealing with the current and present day X-Men. But now they're not there. So that, that dynamic isn't there. I mean, we still have some Black Vortex things with Angels and his Firewings. A lot of people are asking about that on forums. So uh, Bendis' um, crossover event is still loud and clear here. Uh, but just because they don't have the present day X-Men to play off of, I don't think all new X-Men is, is holding up to its namesake. Now you have the all-new Humans, and that's by a Charles Soule, who also does Uncanny Inhumans. So Charles Soule is sort of now the Inhumans guy, and that's way back when, when Matt Fraction was supposed to do it, and he didn't follow through. Charles Soule sort of took over the Inhumans. But here we have all-new Inhumans, number one, and that has to do a lot with the new humans, Crystals, the sister of Medusa. She's a elemental. She's quite the badass, quite hot. Um, but here, here's a question for you. How did Gorgon get into his wheelchair? Can someone, I know I read it somewhere, spine broken, I don't, I just can't remember where it was. That would be great if someone could comment as to how Gorgon is in the wheelchair. Uh, they're doing this sort of, well, X-Men did it, so, you know, now I can do in, in humans come to me, Something like uh, Xavier, I think. All right, so, Soul's writing good stuff. Um, just too many titles, perhaps. So, all new in humans, then you have all new X-Men, and then you have all new, all different. Avengers. 
I was told that this is the flagship title. Wade did win the Harvey Award for Daredevil. That is nothing to shake a stick at. Um, he's in with big writers like Morrison and, and uh, Kirkman and Brian K. Vaughn. Um, but so far in this, Miles Morales surfing on the back of Iron Man, Iron Man was the best part. And that was, I mean, that's, that's not the greatest best part, is it? So now we have the new Avengers. And that's uh, Al Ewing, like I'm saying, uh, that is writing Illuminati. And obviously, uh, excuse me, the Ultimates. Obviously, his pearls are going there. Um, it's not bad writing. Um, I even got used to the art. Just something isn't hitting correctly. So, new Avengers and AIM, and now Earth's Defenders from Intergalactic Threats. I would have to say this is sort of the, the anime Japanese type of art. I can get used to it, but uh, that's the new Avengers of five different Avengers titles, you know. And then you have Uncanny Humans. Now, this is supposed to be a really big thing for you because Kang's origin is now revealed. That's big for some people, and it happens within this number two of the Uncanny Inhumans. Mm, it's not bad. It's just not epic, but uh, if you're into Kang... And that was, uh, what was it, Remembers Uncanny Avengers that King was very big in. All right, now going into more of a Bendis, Gardens of the Ga Guardians of the Galaxy. A lot of the Black Vortex, like I said, is carrying over. Um, so that, and that's also the Kree destruction by Thanos' son when he was Ubered up so that the brood can go into their heads and then Kitty Pride, you know, just basically destroyed the entire planet. So that is definitely a cliffhanger here, but I... I'm going to say that Brian Michael Bendis is putting his pearls into something else, okay? So then you have Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and this is 3. That's where Hala is the last accuser from Hala, which is the Kree homeworld, the jewel of, of the galaxy. And it's... I'd rather read the Black Vortex again, Mr. Bendis. Um, I'm putting Guardians of the Infinity. I was told to get this because it was written by Abnet. And you have three sets of time displaced Guardians. i not a fan. And then the other one was about Thing in and, and a, a Gladiator setting. I, I certainly am not going to keep on getting Guardians of Infinity. <clears throat> maybe you will. Maybe you tell me why. I don't know. But Brian Michael Bendis is, is putting his stuff in Invincible Iron Man. It can't be the flagship because it's a single title. Um, the Ultimates is definitely there, and all new, all different Avengers is supposed to be the flagship by Wade. But this title is going to be after the Vision, after Ultimates, Vision, I would say, in, in a, the Invincible Iron Man. Art, fantastic. They're fighting in Marina Del Rey. This is, this is, this is definitely a title that I think should be on your pull list. Um, it's all about Brian, my, uh, Brian. Michael Bendis, who was working as a consultant producer for Jessica Jones. What a wonderful Netflix binge that was. Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. Great casting with Luke Cage. Much better than Terry. Uh, everyone thought that the guy, uh, well, we all know Terry from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Love that show. <laughs> all right. So the art, the angles, the lighting, locales, all top notch. 24-panel uh, splash page. Had 12 on each page. Nothing to shake a stick at. And the MJ reference uh, from Superior Spider-Man run, pretty damn cool. Dan Slott doing the Superior Spider-Man. So that's Brian Michael Bendis. Now we're going to get into the single titles. Um, we have Ryan doing uh, Nova, and we have the father and son, long last. A little twist at the end. Um, a fun read, nothing epic here. Uh, Lemire, Jeff uh, Lemire doing Hawkeye number one, carrying over from a short stint that was about five issues um, after taking over Matt Fraction's run. And you can tell that Perez is trying to do David Aja Aja's uh, artwork, but he is not, nothing holds a candle to what David did. So here we are. I mean, it's, they, they're breaking up, you know, the female Kate um, and Clint, they're splitting up. They actually did that. It's like, oh, well, we're going to split up. We've never done it before. Well, they did that when uh, Annie Wu, I think was her name, took over, when Matt Fraction was screwing the pooch. And uh, that's when um, she went to L.A., did the whole L.A. woman. All right? Mm, car. And what do you think about this art? I'm not a fan. I don't think I'm a Perez fan. 
um, but you have 30 years in the future a Hawkeye who's old and misses and stuff um, with Kate. And will that be on my pull? I don't know. Nick Spencer, Astonishing Ant-Man number two. It's not so funny any longer. I don't know what Nick Spencer's doing, but his original Ant-Man was fabulous and just seems after this reboot, it's not really there. Uh, you feel bad for him, but, you know, someone comes in to save the day. It's, it's good. It's good. Now, Amazing Spider-Man. People are liking this. They would say it's almost on par with Invincible Iron Man. Uh, Dan Slott, again, um, just needless Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters being inserted everywhere. It's killing me. You have Coulson, and then you have Mockingbird, uh, Bobby Morris, and it's just... You can tell it's gratuitous how they put them in. Even in uh, Karnak, you have Phil, Col uh, Phil Coulson and Karnak being written by Warren Ellis for at least the first six issues. Let's see if they can carry on where they screwed the pooch with Brian Wood and Colin Bunn in Moon Knight. But here we go. Web cannons from a web jet. Uh, all the fan love letters saying how great it is isn't going to change my mind. Peter Stark isn't working for me. Uh, Black Knight, number one, was really, really... High hopes on this one. Uh, it's a succinct story, but I am not really a fan of the Weird World tie-in from the Secret Wars Battle World. And so then they brought in Uncanny Avengers. Again, remember, there's Uncanny X-Men, Uncanny Avengers. It's either all new or Uncanny, and then they put three or four different titles on it. I'm surprised there isn't an Uncanny Spider-Man. So um, it's good to see the Uncanny Avengers here to sort of nail in our head who those people are. But the blade's taking control, and it's. Yeah, I'm the D and D guy, and I thought that you know, dragons and swords would be of my liking, but uh, it's, or sentient swords for that matter is also D and D. Underwhelming and predictable. Art's okay. Now here's another Jason Aaron. Aaron's all over the place, people, and I was so excited for Doctor Strange. It's good in its own right, but it's not the Doctor Strange, Reverend Doctor Strange, that I want. It's very irreverent and the wonky slugs and mind bugs and stuff. I mean, yeah, imagination, I'm here. I just wanted that Reverend Doc Strange, which actually um, Bendis does in Invincible Iron Man. That's the, that's the Doc Strange I wanted to see. Anyway, this is number three, and it's not Thor, God Butcher, with Isad Ribic and uh, Jason Aaron. It's not what, I, not what I was expecting. I'm not going to take it off the pull list, but uh, it's not what, I, not what I had hoped. Jason Aaron also writing, why is this five bucks? Everything Aaron puts out is five bucks. It's so uncool. <laughs> and Jason Aaron is really writing Southern Bastards. That's his best stuff. He also did uh, Men of Wrath, which is in trade right here. Um, good story. It's I think it's one through five. Could be yeah, one through five. Good, good, uh, very gnarly type of story. But if you if you want gnarly type of stories like this, I would definitely recommend Garth Ennis's The Preacher, which is coming out on TV very soon. All right, so sequiturs there. We're back to Jason Aaron with the Mighty Thor. Um, we learn about who's behind the hammer, but the reason for turning back to a human is addressed. This is just somewhat. Somewhat unbelievable. There, there is a second hammer that is alluded to. That may be cool to get the male Thor back. Uh, Jason Aaron, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who is also writing Star Wars. Lots of lightsabers in this one. Um, you know, the hut has a necklace of lightsabers. I thought only Jedi's had them. And it's uh, another gladiator type scene in this. Uh, Jason Aaron. Writes Vader down. Now. Diodato, Diodato. This is one of my favorite of any Marvel, Disney, Star Wars. If you have to get one, get this part one of six of Vader Down. It is fantastic because Diodato did the Hickman's New Avengers and Avengers and the whole spacefaring um, arc of, of Marvel in 2014-15. And now he's doing spacefaring, but we recognize the ships, TIE Fighters and X-Wings, etc. I mean, just, if you get one of them, get this one. I tell you, the art is fantastic. And that is part one, and then we have part two of Darth Vader, and that's Kieran Gillen, who writes many a thing. Um, but uh, it's, it's, so, it's one of the best crossovers, and having this down there just helps you, you know, in terms of finding which one to read in order. Back then, when I started in 2013, they really didn't do that. So good on them. 
it's a total bridging issue on this one. You can tell that, you know, Kieran's just sort of getting the storyline and the art and the stories coming from Aaron. So Aaron, doing Southern Bastards, decided to have Jason Latour write the last one, and it took me halfway through to realize that, you know, it's not as good at writing. Well, guess what? He's working on The Goddamned. And he skipped Southern Bastards for this Cain and Abel caveman come on. I mean, the art is nifty. It's a little different than usual, and it's, it's sort of, it grabs your attention. But for him to let go of, of Southern Bastards, uh, I don't know. Okay, now going into The Independence. One of my favorites in little known gem is The Autumn Lands, which was uh, originally Tooth and Claw, and they had to go through some copyright infringement. And I have the trade because I want to support this. It's just, it's the best three bucks. How about that? It, it, I, in my opinion. So many reasons why I dig this one. I mean, the, the speaking animals, just remember, the speaking animals that are bipedal and have magic that's diminishing in the world call the agents to a basically future to us, future human that was fighting like a space war. But these are all bipedal. I mean, the way that the owl acts and the way that the dog acts, I mean, it's, 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 it's something special. And that's what I want in a comic. It's to transport me, learn stuff very much like why the last man you get to learn stuff but this is a very, very much transports you to a different world um autumn lands so very good saga still delivering no alana or marco in this one you have the kid that's being basically in prison being taught but it's interesting because in the back letters there's a lot of stories about prisoners that can't read saga because of the sexual content interesting is it not I find it interesting that they want to, but the ones that do, they love it, and they, they are not really comic book fans, and they're sharing it around. So talking about Saga transcending the normal comic verse reader to other people, <laughs> read, the, read the letters on this for actual prisoners in, in real life are, are reading it. Paul Jenkins. Um, I got this one because Deathmatch is actually one of the first comic books to get me reading out, uh, outside of the normal big two um it was my first one and boy i can't remember which that it was not image i think it was boom could be dynamite but i think it was boom and i have all three trades i have all the singles uh because i want to back them i thought the way that they did deathmatch was so good and it's actually the same time as avengers arena came out and i put avengers arena arena to shame let me tell you but the way that they did uh the dossiers of each of the people and and even the the finale wasn't that bad Around then, there's a lot of bad finales. Clyde Barker, The Next Testament, bad finales. Um, but Paul Jenkins, I'm sure you've heard of him. Um, Deathmatch, and uh, this one is, is funny because it's replica, and it reminds me of Michael Keaton back before there was, like, really good green screens. I like pizza. I like it. <laughs> you know how you make a copy of a copy, and the copy isn't really as, as good as the original copy of the copy? And that's the one he's shaving his tongue multiplicity. Gotta love it. All right, so that's what this reminds me of, replica. We'll see how that goes. Um, not exactly on my pull list. Mike Costa is still writing this goddamn thing, and it's just like there's two different stories in here, and there's Loki and Asgard. I like to see all of the, and then there's Jesus and the devil. So all of the mythos are together. I find that neat, but I find it very trying because it's now what? Issue 45, you know. So let me see. You have Costa, who's also writing The Web Warriors. And then you have Kieran Gillen, who's writing Vader. And then the uh, ads, he's also doing Mercury Heat and something Pru. Um, no, no, that's Garth Ennis that's writing uh, Code Pru. So it's, I guess what I'm saying is the reason why I get this is because it's from Avatar Publishing. And I like to have something at least from each publisher and I get to see the ads and what the other authors are writing. Because I still say that there's only a certain amount of pearls I can put into any one given magazine. All right, now we have this T in four. He did Mimetic, and this is apparently the spiritual successor. It's called Cognetic. Um, I haven't read Mimetic, so I just started off on here. Um, and it seems to be like microorganisms, eight microorganisms are in your body, and then they can talk to each other and take over. It's, it's a, a, it could be good. Let me just say that. This is the first issue. I'll let you know. That's by Boom. Now we have Symmetry, and it's Image, but it's also Top Cow, and I didn't know about Matt Hawkins, 
Matt Hawkins is a veteran guy. He's the COO and president of Top Cow for over 20 years, and very uh, he was a veteran image guy when they first um, put Image together. But this is like the Hunger Games plus Isaac Asimov plus Ion Flux. It's a utopian. The last four, last two pages explain his research on a utopia. That in itself is worth uh, reading. Just what would are the pillars, he calls them, of what utopia would be. That's symmetry. Okay, so utopian society, robots, etc. Now, I love Sheltered. If you read, if you watch my vlogs, all of them, who, who has? If anyone has watched all my vlogs and somehow could prove it, I will send them a Tribble. Seriously, a Star Trek Tribble, physical Tribble that I got at the store. I wish I had one to show you, but yeah, I'll send you that. All right, so Ed Brisson, he wrote the Sheltered. It's a 15-issue um, series, and it was picked up by the Walking Dead production company. It will be a TV uh, series, and that, in a very much in style of Kirkman, who writes Outcast. It is like you watch you watch this comic. Even the little small panels are little camera inserts. It's almost like they're writing the screenplay. They don't have to do the dialogue. I mean, basically, you know, here it is, and make <laughs> make the scene. Get the actors, cast the actors, have the different camera angles, and here's the dialogue. It's smart beyond belief. So Ed Brisson is now doing this. Um, the problem with this is that you have good people making bad decisions, and that's sort of hard to watch. And it's about Vancouver. A really cool word that he uses is renoviction. And that's basically, you know, hey, you have the people that have lived there, crush it down, raise the rate, they move, they make this huge up, uh, condo complex, and have rents that you can't afford. And that's happening in many different places, Vancouver being one of them. Renoviction, very, very cool uh, new word there. Also, what's sort of weird is that there's a phone number that's halfway covered up on one page and not covered up on the other. So there's actually a Vancouver phone number on there. I'm not going to dial it, but if any of you dial it, let me know what it is. I don't know if it's like, it's, it's the number of a drug dealer, so maybe it's a drug rehab. I don't know. I don't want to dial it. You dial it. Let me know. <laughs> so back to Outcast. Again, screenplay uh, concerning the TV show is on Cinemax. Interesting choice in my eyes. Um, but uh, this issue, Kyle deals with his sister, and it's a lovely, fitting ending. Very, very Kirkman-esque here. So obviously still on my pull. Um, another just great image is uh, Hickman. Remember, he Hickman is finishing up on Secret Wars here. He's been writing east of west, and his pearls go to here. This is just a fabulous, fabulous comic. And in fact, I got the year one huge comic. Just when I go back, I want to. I mean, the art by Nick Dragota is, mm, and the way that he does sort of this neo apocalypse new way of. Uh, I remember way back when when I said the so the, God, PRA, PRA Publics, People's Republic. Um, the Golden Gate has those little flares like, like a Chinese bridge. Uh, can't say enough about this, but this particular issue is so awesome because you watch it just like Outcast. You're, you're watching it instead of reading it. This, you watch the entire thing. How awesome is it that there's an entire comic book? And here's a, here's a question. Has there been an entire comic book without any dialogue? Because there's only one bit of dialogue, and it's the very last page. That, to me, is... A diamond in the rough and pearl for all of us. So if you want to just see, if you haven't done East of West for some reason, pick this up. And it won't even be a fast read. You're going to watch how everything happens within that scene. And there's no dialogue the entire time until the last page. Pretty cool. Along with Nick Dragota doing East of West, the entire issue with no dialogue, Nick Dragota did actually a non-image. I mean, this is Alien Superman going through... Like I said, it's always fun to watch people get their powers. That's why Heroes is good. Heroes Reborn, not so good. The Discovery is what we like to see. So he draws this. I'm an immediate fan. The colors, the faces, the landscapes. I mean, they're all so familiar from East and West. Awesome. So, and by the way, this is one of seven. Yes, one of seven. And each one is going to be a different... Uh, artist and one person on a forum said a murderer's row of talent you know you have jay lee etc so uh i probably will get the trade as well because as a keepsake um but a coming of age story it's getting his powers reminds me of robert kirkman's invincible the first 
the first uh, issue when he's just getting his powers again. Uh, all right, so now we got to Hitch's, Brian Hitch's JLA. The reason why I like this is because it's still the old school JLA, and you have Aquaman that's not on the cover, but still has his orange scale. You have Superman, not depowered. Um, Wonder Woman still wearing her old garb from the beginning of the New 52. Now watch, watch this. Uh, remember, Time Warner is Warner Brothers, Looney Tunes. Watch this cover. But Brian Hitch didn't write it. Is he gone? What the hell happened? He only had four issues. So upon research, he just apparently is known for delays. Brian Hitch will be back. Um, like I said in the other one, that Brian Hitch is in the last part, like a Q&A of it. Um, so, yeah, read that. He'll be back. It's a wonderful, wonderful story about religion and people willingly going to the religion because he's actually solving starvation. He's solving world hunger and making peace. Instead of just us liking religion and hoping that happens, it actually happens. And how do people respond to that? Because Brian Hitch was raised in a very strict Catholic household. So that's what he's working off of. Yep. Deeply personal. And a dream job, he said. Four issues and he's out? Nah. But this is a Martian Manhunter single arc that ties into the Martian Manhunter title. Um, but yeah, so he'll be back. Love the title. This is sort of a one-off Why? while he gets back into the swing of things. Deathstroke, uh, the 20th Daniel, loving the, the art. But uh, I missed the God Killer arc. He fought Batman, he fought Wonder Woman, he fought Superman. I thought he was going to go through all of the JLA. Not so. Now it's back to the suicide arc where he helped him, though they thought that he uh, ditched him in Russia. So, prison break and all that. It's Bell Reeve, Amanda Waller, all of that back together. Um, hoping that gets through the whole suicide run, gets back to fighting the JLA. Earth 2 Society, you have Jimmy Olsen just going, whoo. He is a god now. I mean, far from the Jimmy Olsen, James Olsen from Supergirl's uh, TV show. Am I right? Am I right? Yep. Getting worshippers. I mean, it's the uh, Jimmy Olsen is the Earth 2 crazier version. Now, I'm not going to rant about Colin Bunn. I'm just going to say after uh, probably five issues of Aquaman that I believe he ruined. I'm, st I'm starting to get single issues, and I believe, check this out, Jeff Johns is coming back to save Aquaman, thus vindicating and verifying exactly what I've been saying, that Colin Bunn was spread too thin and is writing while having coffee or on the shit pop. DK3, it's getting political. I don't like it. Keep politics as much as you can out of my comics, please. It's not Frank Miller actually writing it. It's just like, oh, I have an idea. Now you fill in the blanks. Um, I do know that there's a slip cover for the hard covers that I would have liked to have gotten. Um, but now, this is now a big question mark on, uh, for me. Um, there is a fight scene and a reveal that you go, phew, what? I mean, you, so you make me get the second one to figure it out. But whatever the reason is, I'm not exactly going to enjoy it from what I saw on that. Again, I don't do spoilers, so that sounds a little bit innocuous, but ubiquitous, innocuous. Last one, people. Rick Remender's best work. Now, I have low on a binge, binge pile, saving them up. I probably have, I don't know, 3 to 11 of low. And it is so easy to see how there's so much of what he did in the underwater dystopian society of, of the future, of what he did here. Basically, low was him working out the kinks for Tokyo Ghost, which was originally only five issues, uh, four issues, then it's five, but in the bat, in the letters here, you know that now it's up to six. And the, the, exploring the idea of tech and instant gratification just gone awry and then turning it into a love story, just like he does with Captain America Dimension Z, with Lowe, with Black Science. It always ends up to be family, love, and loss. But this particular one, it's, it's like you don't even want the trade. You want the singles because every month it's just something that you can just relish and sort of dig deep into because there's so much going on in the background. And that's a testament to uh, Murphy and Hollingsworth. Um, on my bench piles is Fade Out, which is at 11 of 12. Ed Brubaker and, and Betty Brightweiser doing the colors. 
really awesome story about 1940s, 50s, and Hollywood. Um, another one is low, like I said, and We Stand on Guard is now completed, six of six. I'm going to stop and read all six and do a little review. Um, so that's it right now. I wanted to keep them short. God, I hope that was short. Hopefully it was 15, not 35. I don't even know. But this is PK saying thank you for clicking play.